Hey folks, let's learn something new about the oil and gas industry. All right, you know, we usually bring stuff to you that's educational, it's informative. We're bringing you something that's serious and it's a big deal. I'm sitting here with David Reed with National Oil. How are you doing today, David? I'm doing good. How are you? Wonderful. You made a post a while back on LinkedIn talking about a redeemed marketing, about Red M. And I read your post on LinkedIn. I did some research. I had no idea that Houston was like the epicenter of U.S. human trafficking. Yeah, the, it, it's we know it's busy. The numbers are, are a bit vague because how do you measure it? But we know that we have all the signs that there's a lot going on as well as the design of Houston. It's got a big port. It's next to a lot of major freeways and it's connected to other countries. So they, uh, there's a lot of things that, that draw at the size of the city. So relatively, you could say, yeah, it's not that surprising, but it, uniquely it's positioned and we see a lot of uh, human trafficking here. Yeah. Yeah, and then you and I were talking before we turned the microphone on. I always assumed it was just runaways or people getting abducted, and that's not it. It's there's this whole devious back end story that's that's really scary. Yeah, they well there was there was a lot of trafficking. People think it means this has to be somebody from another country, which it doesn't. And so there's they they aim at a, an age, uh, and of, they look for vulnerability. And so the age of twelve to fourteen, they try and get people. Uh, usually majority women, ladies, girls, and they try and fall into the U.S. Uh, factor of their um, their targets. Uh, they're aiming at women who are um, susceptible. So if you're so a young girl is susceptible to an older boyfriend who buys her and gives her things, and so they, they call it the boyfriend con, and they go through this process of getting trust. Once they get trust, any trafficker, it's a psychological game. They try to get them to believe that they're connected and build a new culture for them. And so if they get them young enough, they manage to keep them in the business thinking that they have chosen to be there. So it's a very, very ugly and psychological crime that is happening on our streets. Yeah, and we want to make a difference. We want to do something about this. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be done. Your Red M group is a bunch of volunteers, right? Yeah, yeah. We actually started, I, I'm on a board for a recovery house um, called Redeemed. And they have uh, eight beds, and they're constantly helping these women get their lives back. And so it's okay to recover people, but when they get recovered, if they just go to a regular shelter, 80% uh, of them go back to the life because of the way they've been trained mentally. They don't think there's other options. So I'm on this board that actually has got about an 80% uh, recovery rate in Houston, but it takes a lot of money. So I sat with them, looked at their numbers, and was shocked, you know, to see how little money they had, and they were spending it well, but they just just were were desperate for cash. And so the next day, I I got onto LinkedIn, and I said, okay, I need marketing muscle, because I thought there's no way that people won't jump in and help. So I was surprised. After one day, thirty thousand people viewed that post. Uh, we within five days had about one hundred and twenty-five thousand people say, okay, I, I want, I'm I'm in. What do you What do you need? And so we got together 50 people in Houston. That we're obviously a pro bono group. We're not even an official group. We're just doing this work. And so we got we dove into helping Redeemed, and we're starting to build a prototype for how we can help any kind of organization like this get access to high-end marketing so they can get cash. Because most of these organizations spend their life trying to recover the girls and have no time or money to think about actually getting money to themselves. So. Yeah, and so we're going to help. You're doing something. You have a gala coming up. When is it? Sure. Uh, September 20th. It's called Keep Houston Free. In fact, if you go to the website, keephoustonfree.com, it has all the information about it there. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're out there looking for people that want to help, that want to donate a few dollars. Come on, every business out there can, can donate a little bit of money. We're going to do it. Um, but one of the quickest ways to do it right now is to actually buy some tables at your gala. That's right. Yeah. There's a whole range of, of prices where you can sponsor and have a table. Some people are just choosing to pay a bit more. Two people can get uh, seats themselves, but still donate a thousand bucks. But it's I think it's about, I don't know, 150 a head or something for a regular seat. But everyone, everyone should really be getting involved in doing something. I think the problem with trafficking is it's so huge that you think, well, what can I do? And it's very scary and big. Well, do something. So if you can help one American girl, and this is an American program for, for uh, American ladies trapped uh, and needing recovered, if you can help one of them, if you can be involved and be a part, I don't need you to do everything. I just need you to do something. And so it's the same as companies, I think, is probably our best bet. We've been reaching out to oil and gas companies, so if anyone needs help, communicating or talking about it, I can talk to any of your executives or whatever you need.
Yeah. So we know there's a bunch of oil and gas companies that pay attention to what we do, that listen to the podcast. We're going to promote this on the podcast. This is going up on the blog. We're going to write a check ourselves. This is important. Do me a favor. Reach out to the website. Give what you can. Let's make a difference. Thank you. Yeah. I'm 100% behind you. So, folks, hope this helped. We will see you next time. 